So here we are back with our 2007 uh, PT Cruiser. It is a solid derby car, I would say. Body-wise, again, solid. Uh, some surface rust, kind of surface rust. Excuse me, you can kind of see some there. Uh, otherwise, really pretty solid. Motor runs pretty good. This car I got because the fuel cell kept shutting down, not working. I thought it was just the fuel cell, as whenever we put in the fuel cell out of my uh, 2002 PT Cruiser with my wiring that I had in a derby car last year, it worked perfectly fine. So I bought it, was excited about it. However, whenever I put it back in, uh, just a couple weeks ago, my, my fuel cell and started her up or tried to, the fuel cell wouldn't work. So it turns out what it seems to be is the wiring, uh, the ground, I guess, with these cars. Uh, it's a particular uh, error, I guess. I don't know, to where the the wiring that's running underneath that uh, you plug in for the fuel cell there, somewhere the ground, uh, it seems, just kind of in and out of contact. So it didn't work. I even tried a different fuel cell, didn't work. Ended up, uh, I was about to, to start kind of just forgetting it and put this old fuel cell back in, turn the key on, and the fuel cell works. So uh, to bypass that, we are going to completely redo the wiring uh, directly from the fuel cell to my battery, which will be up in the passenger seat there. I'm going to get a toggle switch. Uh, tomorrow I'm going to dive into that. But just a quick little video here to show. Uh, started to pull, again, the bumper. We've been moving around with my father-in-law's tractor, so that's kind of scratched up. Uh, some of the car was already stripped out. That's why I wasn't really worried about kind of starting a video until now but uh yeah i'm going to take the door windows out going to cut the windshield out here shortly uh, you can see inside the seats on these cruisers easily pop out it's kind of nice thing about them i just set the tank in there that but that's probably where it's going to set i'm going to bring my hose up through the middle there uh, just kind of put some rubber around i just have it sitting like that for now it's not even hooked up put the battery up front and uh yeah weld my my cage, we're gonna weld the cage right, uh, but I'm gonna take the windshield out here, take the bottom part of the dash off, take the uh, uh, airbags out inside, do all that stuff, and pretty much that's it inside. Up front, again, these guys, everything's tight together. I mean, it's really pretty compact and solid. If you can keep your wheels, you can see how they're kind of really sticking out there. If you can keep people out of your front wheels, uh, you're gonna run for a while, and that's what we're gonna try to do. A week from yesterday, we are in a derby. But up front, not going to do much other than the uh, thermostat right in there. I have my thermostat that I gutted from my PT Cruiser last year worked great. I also have the uh, uh, other coolant sensor in there. I'll unplug and strap that on top. Otherwise, just going to kind of pull some of the wiring up in. Again, the battery lines, I'll run those through the windshield. Uh, but pretty much that's it up front. I am, though... You can see right there's the starter. It's kind of hard to see with the lighting, but it's so exposed that if I get any sort of press up front, that fan will go into the starter. It's actually what took me out of my first derby with the cruiser, so I am going to take that fan off. I'm just going to unbolt up here, take the fan off, unplug it. Not really worried about that anyways, and that way it would be a little more space between the starter, and I'll spray foam around that as well. Spray foam the electronics, probably pull this guy in a little, so... That's the game plan. Uh, pretty excited if we can get the uh, wiring right, in particular for that fuel cell, to where I don't shut myself off. Uh, I think we got a solid derby car. So here's kind of the first look of it. We're about to dive into the glass, make a mess, and then finish tearing out the uh, door windows as well as the plastic. This uh, door here is actually stuck shut as well as the rear door. I'm probably going to have to cut the bottom part of the rear door so I can get that open just to finish making sure I get everything cleaned out. So here we go. This is our uh, Claring County Fair, hopefully derby car. We're going to start tearing into it. Just one other quick note before we start tearing in the car. That is the shifter off of my PT Cruiser from last year. Here is the prior shifter. So this guy had a heck of a time I have the battery sitting here now, but here's the transmission and that uh, the, the if it will shifter, or I'm not sure what it is that comes up out that the cable mounts to, it was so locked up. Well, I used uh, some spray from somebody's uh, Freol, I believe it was. I don't have it in front of me right now. Uh, but just got it out of zone and it broke it loose. I was so excited, but I'd already broken the plastic piece for the shifter, but I kept the one from my last year's shifter and it's not perfectly lined up. It does shift. It doesn't go all the way in the park, but that shouldn't be a big deal. I can set the brake while I'm gone. You can start at neutral. 
idle and neutral so that's something else with this car so some interesting aspects of this car we'll uh we'll see how she comes out here we go all right so just a quick little update here you can see we have got the rear hatch open uh it was locked shut uh, couldn't open from the outside i was able to get the plastic off on the inside and then kind of manually pull the lever down and it released so pretty excited about that got all the wires going into the window there and the lock and everything out and i'll be able to easily get this uh, back little bumper cover off got all the door windows out including the uh, door panels and everything there kind of an interesting system this 2007 cruiser ran i uh, got pretty much the whole inside stripped you can see just real quick and uh, that is where we're going to run the line i'm going to run my rubber hose around there and i'll uh, mount or bolt the line my kind of clamp to the ground not sure if we'll do it inside the car or below the car we'll see here that's where my tank's going to go but again i'm going to tweak my setup there i just have it hooked up right now so i can uh, get the car out and you can see the dash started to pull everything out uh, got uh, pretty much everything out of the center there uh, still got to take the airbags out but again we're coming along I wanted to stop so I could get the windshield out here. It's kind of the perfect time of day to do that. And we'll go from there. So we're going to make a mess. We're going to use tarps this time. Kind of see how we're going to put it down under the car. Kind of like how we did here. See if we can catch most of it that's around it. And just the stuff inside we sweep out. And see if I can get these guys to come out. Uh, but we'll see. So continuing on. So just an update. We have successfully revived i guess you'd say our fuel cell uh the wiring uh we went and got a toggle switch which you see there uh just a simple toggle switch and right now everything's laying here battery terminals i have off but uh got it uh, straightened out talking to a couple guys that have ran uh, pt cruisers as well as a couple guys that have ran uh, cars that uh, they use the the kind of direct line fuel cell with the toggle switch which is smarter because you're getting rid of the fuse box and I've, I've been knocked out of a derby that way so ended up not too bad at all got it hooked up and uh, she she works beautifully so super stoked about that so everything's stripped just finishing with the dash so that we can have a nice kind of mount for the uh, cage whenever I weld it gonna get the cage welded in everything stripped out inside Fuel line is all set. I've got my rubber and everything there, as well as just kind of have the line from moving. Got to bolt the tank down. Uh, up front, got the battery terminals in there. Just a couple more things to do. Got to get the uh, tranny line duped back into itself. And uh, also going to, again, take out the thermostat net. So in the home stretch, but the big thing is the toggle switch did work. And again, we got all the glass cleaned out as well. So we are in the home stretch, relieved and excited. So here we are just a couple days out. We're getting down to the end. We got our cage welded in, which uh, actually, you know, with my cheap welder, it's gasless. Uh, pretty pleased with how it came out. I mean, hopefully she stays strong. Uh, got smart this time and did the side pieces first, then did the bar going from inside this side piece so as the cars are slamming me they're pressing on this the only thing I'm a little bit nervous about is this weld along the vehicle I mean it's I wouldn't say it's a bad garbage weld but just as I'm getting smashed up I'm just a little nervous about that holding on to the side so I'll probably run because it's running over my fuel cell of my crossbar here uh, just get a cheap ratchet strap and run from up there under the bar over to here so if it were to fall that ratchet strap would catch it and it wouldn't fall in my fuel cell possibly break my fuel line and then i'd be done so gonna drill the tank gonna cut off this little piece just some little things left set the battery again set my uh, ignition switch and everything i'm gonna put it right in the side there just use some uh, some zip ties to keep it in place make sure it's secure secure our battery lines and then just tidy a couple things up front so final moments here we're closing down to the derby so here's our last video kind of showing the build and then the next video i'm gonna have a complete look at the car with everything ready to go including the uh, paint job we'll see how it comes out but just wanted to show i took off the core support there the top holding the radiator in unbolted there the 
the guard so you could lift that off. It's sitting right there. And then again, I took the fan off. And my reason for it is this. You can see right there is the starter. And when that fan is in there, any sort of press is going to put that fan right on top of the starter. And you can see how it's exposed. And in fact, the first time I ran the PT Cruiser last year, that's what happened. That was my fault that I had a guy hit me in the radiator. I thought I still had my small bumper up front. I didn't. But it went in and it hit the starter and snapped the starter in half. It was even more exposed than this one. It was a 2002. But because of that, and also because, again, the thermostat, which you can see goes right in there, try to get my light on it, which is sitting right here, I'm taking out, and if you ever want to do this, oops, sorry, my light's bright, there is the normal thermostat, sits down in here like this, again, it's got like a sensor, I guess, how it works, and it opens up whenever the coolant temperature tells it, the sensor does, well, I'm putting the coolant sensor on top of the motor, so this guy... I'm gutting, and here's my one from last year. Again, I just cut, in essence, the bottom off, so it's not a completely open hole, and it's still got the gasket and everything, but water will continuously cycle. So because of that, it really, the fan isn't necessary. I mean, you could say it's cooling the water a little bit that's in the radiator, but it's constantly circulating from the motor to the radiator until I puncture the radiator, whatever, so the fan's not really necessary. So I took that fan off, and now I'm going to put the core support back on. I'm going to put the gutted therm uh, thermostat in there as well as, uh, it's kind of hard to see, but right in the bottom corner of this 2007 cruiser is where the coolant sensor is. So I'm going to unplug that, and then I have mine right there from last year, uh, the one I bought at AutoZone. I'll strap that on top. So that way, again, my motor should run until it locks up, and I have more space between the starter and you can see there this is where it in essence set the radiator so i've got i mean with that fan out i mean look at that thing i've got an extra six inches maybe maybe even more so good deal so we're coming in the only other thing i'm going to do here up front right here there's the one and then right above it's the other that's the radio or excuse me the uh not the radiator but rather the uh, transmission hose going into the radiator and then back out well, I'm just going to cut those right here, and then I bought this little guy. Let me grab him here. Where did I put him? Oh, I thought I had him out. But uh, just a little little piece. I don't know where I put it. Sitting right here somewhere. Uh, but just a little piece to dupe those lines back together, so that way my radiator does get punched. The transmission is going to continue to function. So... Coming down the stretch after I do this, make sure everything runs one more time, and then I'll just bolt in the battery in the tank and pretty much ready to go. See what we got. So here's our last tidbit for our build video for this 2007 PT Cruiser. We're at the morning before the derby. Tomorrow's the derby. We're excited. We're right on the cusp. We're going to get the paint job done now, get my roof signed. Want to put some decals again this is going to be our batmobile if you will we're going uh, superhero theme so we're kind of excited to see how that turns out but uh, just tied up my wire but the last thing i wanted to point out was this car had this airbag right under the steering wheel on the dash and i was going to leave the dash there i usually take the bottom out anyways but i'm like man if somebody was using this car and didn't take that out taking that to the shin or knee area i don't think would be pleasant and again, I believe if the airbag does pop, if you're using the stock fuel cell, I think that'll shut you down too. So just wanted to mention that. And then the other thing, again, I'm, you know, I'm a demolition noob. That's, you know, that's how I, my son and I created the site. We kind of learn as we go and we're learning. We're three years in now, but I'm pretty sure this again is another impact sensor. And just like my Chrysler, it had the one right in the rebar. There's always one there that I just unplug. And then I just tape off my electric lights and all those things, just kind of tape them in so they're out of the way. But this guy, just like my Chrysler did, my Chrysler had it inside underneath where the headlights are. And I couldn't even see it until I had everything stripped out. And they had one on each light plugged in. Well, this one, you can kind of see it's real hard, but right inside here... Uh, you can't really see it until you get this radiator flap. Again, I took the core support out because I took the fan off because I'm cycling my water. But there's one on each side. They're bolted to the body. And again, I just unplug it and I'll tape off the wires. But I'm almost positive that is an impact sensor as well or somehow I imagine tied to electronics, the motor. 
So uh, unplug those things. So final moments here, final, uh, hopefully just a couple hours getting a paint job mainly. Uh, and we'll see what we got in the other end. <laughs>